Abandoned by the gaming industry, and even by its owner, the Atari Jaguar has the unique ability to persist in spite of everything it's been through. I, like many others, can appreciate an underdog like this, or an undercat in this case, but the idea of taking something that is seemingly not very good to begin with, and to persist in finding something great within it, well, regardless of whether the effort is a success or not, at least there will be a good story to be told. There is something great about iterating on an idea endlessly just to see how far it can go. The demo scene is a great example of this, but anything that does this, coupled with the Jaguar, becomes something different, something truly special to me. That's why today I'm giving special attention to Towers 2, the enhanced Stargazer edition. In this video, I'm going to do comparisons using footage from both the original version and this newer version of the game. Before that though, here's a brief history leading to the most current release. Towers 2 Plight of the Stargazer was released in 1996 to critical acclaim. <laughs> Just kidding, this game was largely ignored when it was released on the Jaguar. I wonder why? Besides the blowout success that was the Sony PlayStation, to a lesser degree the Sega Saturn and the Nintendo 64, there was also something notable that happened shortly before this game's release. Atari was sold in April 1996, and with it, all publishing support for third parties. So without the support of the marketing dollars and distribution channels that Atari provided for other games, and without an audience in general, making and publishing games for the JAG was like trying to sell copies of Trevor McFur and the Crescent Galaxy to a room full of empty chairs. Nearly everyone had moved on, not without good reason. But for some publishers, like Telegames, there were too many projects still in the oven to just throw away. So, to those of us who are still on team do the math, we got Iron Soldier 2, World Tour Racing, and Towers 2, Plight of the Stargazer. Fast forward 26 years since that original 1996 release, and two other releases on Windows and the Game Boy Color, and wouldn't you know it, JB Games is still updating a game that seems to be leaking the necromancy that its story so prominently features. This one just won't die. And regardless of my own opinion about this game, I'm glad JB Games cares enough about their own work to put in the effort to not only update, but also partner with Songbird Productions to give people the opportunity to enjoy this often ignored dungeon crawler. But before we jump into comparisons, thank you to Songbird and JV Games for letting me play the game and share my thoughts before its general release. I played through the enhanced edition of this game about one and a half times now, and I've been through most of the original release of the game in order to make a more informed comparison. If you want to know my more general thoughts and reactions to both versions of Towers 2, I will link a second video of me playing a bit of both versions of the game in the description. And a last note for transparency's sake. I'm the artist that produced the cover art for the Enhanced Stargazer Edition. I was paid to produce the artwork, but this video and the Link gameplay video are not sponsored. I'll do my best to give my genuine opinions when they come up. Songbird and JV Games have already given a handy list to the public of some of the changes to the game. With that in mind, this comparison won't be comprehensive, but instead focuses on what I believe to be the most important changes and additions to the general audience categorize these changes into foundational changes, interactive changes, and visual changes. There's obvious overlap between these categories, but it should help make the abundant changes easier to go through. Let's get started. The ROM size is one of the changes that covers a lot of ground, but I believe a simple way to show this change is the load time between levels within the tower. The enhanced edition definitely takes longer to load a new level than the standard version. I don't know the exact details as to why it takes longer to load here, but the obvious additions of new audio and textures probably contribute to the longer load time, which most likely indicates a larger ROM size was needed to load a larger diversity of assets. Here I'm comparing the save and load times to and from both memory and the cartridge, also known as the EEPROM. Load times are similar, but you'll notice that the cartridge save time for the enhanced edition is much longer, 
This is because the EE Prom is 16 times the size of the standard edition's EE Prom. This new version is retaining much more data between cold boots, but we'll get more into this in the upcoming section about EE Prom retention. In the footage, you will see that I will kill an enemy, do a cartridge save, and then turn the console on and off again to see what the save will retain. I don't have a complete list of what is retained for either game, but in the standard version, there are many enemy types that respawn after a console reboot. It seems like this isn't the case anymore in the enhanced edition of the game. Another thing that I noticed that is retained is the open and closed state of doors. There is much more that can be discussed here, but these two changes alone drastically change how the game is played. This one is a bit harder to accurately quantify, but by looking at both games side by side through my capture setup, there is a difference in vertical resolution. I highlighted that here in red. I devised a simple running test for this example. First, making sure my character was well fed and picking a place to do the run, it does seem that there is a noticeable speed improvement in the game. Though while playing both games, depending on what is in the field of view, there's slowdown in the game from time to time. It may be a bit less noticeable in the Enhanced Edition. The ability to change controls has been slightly expanded in the Enhanced Edition, adding the Option button as an additional Action button during gameplay. What I consider a massive change for the Enhanced Edition is the ability to open and close doors and pull chains using the Action button. In the standard version, you had to toggle on the inventory interface and use the hand icon to perform these actions. A lot of steps. Not having to do that anymore saves a lot of time and makes it easier to navigate the space of the game in general. It's hard to explain the differences in typical movement in the Enhanced Edition. There is a difference between both versions of the game. And I feel that both games are good for what they are. One obvious difference I noticed is shown in the footage here. It looks like a check has been added when using stairs that stops the movement of the character after loading the next area, and if the player isn't pressing a direction on the d-pad. The standard version carried the velocity between the areas regardless of whether or not the d-pad was still being pressed. This could be a bit annoying because there are a few areas in the game where you'll accidentally go through another staircase or fall down a hole. So this is a nice change. In my opinion, this is the best and most impactful change in the Enhanced Edition of Towers 2. In the Standard Edition, when you pick something up, eat, or change equipment, the player is given complete control over the hand cursor that is used to move the objects around to perform these actions. In contrast, the Enhanced Edition takes cursor control away from the player depending on the object being interacted with in order to move the cursor to the most likely position where the object can be used, as well as flipping the portrait equipment grid card in the top right corner of the inventory interface. For example, if you pick up a piece of food, the portrait will automatically show if the equipment grid was showing before, and then your hand cursor with the food will automatically be placed over your character's portrait. At this point, the controller is given back to the player, and then you can decide whether or not to eat the food. A similar process happens with equipment as well, showing the equipment grid automatically when an object that can be equipped is picked up. Because of the nature of the game's interface, these new functions save a lot of time during gameplay. Items and magic have additional details to help you determine when to use them. This is particularly useful when you run into enemies who are immune to most attacks. A small change, but it does streamline things. When unlocking a door, the inventory interface now automatically closes. It seems that the hand cursor movement has been tweaked in the Enhanced Edition. When comparing both versions of the game, they are both serviceable, but both are still obvious band-aid solutions to a game that was supposed to be used with a mouse. There have been quite a few changes to how the player interacts with NPCs. 
The biggest change for me is that dialogue will automatically be shown when you get close enough to an NPC. Before now, I had never gotten far enough in the standard edition where NPC dialogue became essential. Until I had played the enhanced edition, I didn't even know that you could talk to NPCs. So at least for me, this was a really useful change. If you have a tradable item in hand when colliding with an appropriate NPC, it will automatically trade. This is useful because NPCs are more than likely moving around when you want to talk to them. Speaking of trading with NPCs, some of these trades are necessary to progress. In the standard edition, you could kill these essential NPCs before trading. Then you would have to reboot to respawn the essential NPC. In the enhanced edition though, this has been changed by making them immune to attack until after the trade has happened. Health bars have been added to NPCs. This changes my approach to the game considerably in that it helps me decide whether I should stay or flee from a fight. Very useful. Along with dialogue displaying automatically, when the player collides with an NPC, the NPC will stand still for a moment, as if they are actually talking to you. Finally, NPCs have a voice. This includes calling you out for a fight, dying, or some voice acting that reflects a larger piece of dialogue being communicated through a dialogue box. I'd say that extra ROM space is being put to good use here, and certainly makes the game feel more immersive. In the standard version of the game, sometimes you would be attacking an enemy, and it would seem like they were impossible to defeat. This is because some enemies are immune to normal attacks and some spells. In the enhanced edition, a message is now displayed if you use an ineffective attack or spell. It's noted that some of the puzzles have been adjusted and that there are even new puzzles. I can confirm this when trying to find a specific key early in the game. The location of the key has obviously been changed. I imagine that there have been subtle changes to the environment and other puzzles, but I personally didn't keep track of these more subtle differences. Now for the visual changes. Here are both games introduction logos and title screens for comparison. Take note of the fonts and the new animated background. Personally, I like the standard version's background more, because I believe it helps immerse me as the player getting ready to enter the dungeon. But the new background does tie itself nicely with a larger story that reveals itself throughout the game. There have been some adjustments here to the placement of the character's stats, and the prompt for returning back to the title screen is now listed. You've probably already noticed that the font has changed pretty much everywhere in the game, including the menus. A helpful adjustment to the equipment grid has also been made with icons being added to the boxes to help communicate what type of equipment can be added to a specific slot. There's also some new background paper scroll artwork for the stats box and the spells box. The auto map in the enhanced edition is far more useful than the standard version. Additional information has been added for holes in the floor and ceiling, portals, chains, floor switches, key characters, and more. Also, a visual prompt has been added to the bottom left corner of the new paper graphic to tell the player that they can change the floor map they are currently looking at. Another detail about the auto map I noticed is that the area of discovery as you move around is a lot more liberal than the standard version. This makes exploring a bit faster than it was before. Now onto the visual changes for objects and the environment. The graphics for weapons have been changed. These renders are a bit cleaner than their previous counterparts. Because graphics have been converted to the Jaguar's unique cry color format, this allows for some basic lighting effects. The examples shown in the Enhanced Edition show both a hard transition in lighting and a subtle transition in lighting. This definitely has an emotional impact that the standard version of the game didn't have, a welcome upgrade and something that shows some of the unique capability of the Jaguar. There are too many changes and additions to the environment textures to go over in this video, but the larger ROM size allows JV games to add much more visual variety to the Enhanced Edition. This not only feels better, but does help with navigating the dungeon by giving areas a specific visual theme. I feel the game is much more attractive in this aspect. Enjoy this small showcase of some of these changes and additions. If 
you enjoy classic dungeon crawling, this game is certainly worth picking up. If you're just looking to play the game at a much more reasonable price point than what the original release of the game is currently going for, this is certainly worth your time and money. And if you're a collector, this version of the game is justifiably different from the original release that it deserves a place on your shelf next to the original. But if you're looking for a more meaningful reason to own this game, Towers 2 shares an important story with the Atari Jaguar. A story of persisting to create good things in spite of past failure. Thanks for joining me at the Jag Corner, everyone. Until next time. Kill them.